when people ask me why I decided to study microbiology, there are a number of things I say. I say that I thought it'd be easier than biology because it sounded smaller. Sometimes I say it's because I got scarlet fever once and swore revenge. Perhaps I like studying diseases that actually have a defined antagonist, a tiny little demon that I can point to and say, yes, that is the cause. I can read in the news about emerging disease outbreaks. I have that slight thrill of fear as I imagine what will happen if we lose the war against these pestilences. But that isn't the whole story. Not all microbes are malicious, and not all bacteria are bad. Some viruses aren't vicious. Not all fungi are fiendish, some can even be considered delicious. Our relationship with microbes is far more complex and far more interesting than that. It's not just us versus them, it's us with them. You are not just a person, you are a home, an ecosystem that houses billions of life forms. You help to feed them, keep them warm, and eventually spread them to other people. Whilst most of these bacteria treat us as just another place to live, some of them actually help us. They benefit us, they ward off the evil bacteria that would hurt us. But just focusing on the bacteria that have direct relationships to us limits our perspective on microbiology. Microbiology is so much more than that. We are just one small niche for microbes in a world filled with them. There are bacteria that spread through clouds and are thought to create snowflakes. There are bacteria that glow and are used by fish to light up the depths of the ocean. There are even bacteria that live in volcanoes that respire radioactive metals. That's science fiction right there. But those aren't even the weirdest microbes. Not by a long shot. Some of these single-celled organisms occasionally group together and cooperate. For instance, there's a slime mold called Dictyostelium discoides. When this slime mold encounters adverse conditions, it resorts to drastic action. The individuals can pull themselves together to form a much larger superorganism. This slug-like superorganism can move off to find a new home with better conditions. But some microbes took this level of cooperation to a whole new level, evolving to the point where they couldn't survive on their own anymore. These superorganisms went forth and multiplied. Some of them walk around this planet like they practically own the place, forgetting their microbial forebears. Driving cars, watching films, breathing oxygen and converting protein intake into muscle energy. We all come from bacteria. Bacteria were the first step in the evolutionary path that led to the world we live in today. All of the infinitely diverse life forms that populate this planet can trace their ancestry back to bacteria. If ever we get to the point where we can plant our feet on another planet and encounter alien life for the first time, that life is far more likely to take the form of a little green micro than little green men. Microbiology is about so much more than just infectious diseases. To study microbiology is to examine the full extent of life's diversity and marvel at its bizarreness. To study microbiology is, is to see life at its most primitive and to get to grips with the biological processes we inherited in new ways and to study the very root of our own evolution. To study microbiology is to perhaps gain insight about the life that may live amongst the stars. That's pretty huge for a subject that professes to only study the microscopically small.